switch to drinking wine and being online. <laughs> wine wine out online. Half, <laughs> out of a half pint glass. <laughs> sure it's is. Actually, yes, a half pint glass of wine. That's. I, I insist you go and get a full pint for the main episode. <laughs> I insist you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 43 of the number one crude mistakes podcast with Glenn from on our projects, KG from crude but efficient and Hover from behind the mistakes who I'm sure all our listeners are wondering since last episode did he buy that lathe? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, why not? Uh, well, it's you never buy any tools. No. And uh... I, I just sidetrack very easily. Um, and now there's a container in my driveway. So. <laughs> 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 Yay, um, container! Container, container. Um, those Could you not contain yourself big. any longer? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ooh, brooch. <laughs> yeah. So how does it feel to have another family member like this? Um can only be covered by huge. <laughs> uh, well, we just came home and it was already there and like, ooh, it's a second round with nerves because it is huge. <laughs> it's like, How huge is it? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a 20 foot shipping container, so it's a two and a half uh, wide to a uh, half rough height and then six meter deep so that and is I, a big I, lego block <laughs> sure is and i have been measured and i have been picturing it in my head trying to photoshop it into our yard just to see how it would look like but once it's there it's <laughs> it's massive and it's the reverse TARDIS, although on the inside, it is actually larger than I envisioned. So uh, there is a lot of space. I'm looking forward to um, filling it up, basically. But yeah, the sheer size of that thing, just sitting outside. And it's it's placed next to my garage, which is nice for working on it, but it's a temporary solution. Um, so yeah, um, I need to clean up everything else in our yard so we don't look like... Uh, a scrap dealer yard. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's not that bad, but I, I just feel that when my nerves start kicking in because this is. Uh, I didn't plan on getting it now. I have been talking about it for years, but I was just sitting online. I have a, a search stored, so I, I get notifications every time one pops up, and this one pops up at uh, an auction site, and like, ooh, that's fairly reasonably priced and you know like the, the shape and look of it so i uh, just i might just bid on it just to be in the loop but i did not expect to get it at all so it's just i'm just gonna put down a bid and forget about it and i did and then i got an email right before we went on a miniature holiday like you just bought a container and you need to pay now and you need to arrange to get it the hell out of our property now. Um, so yeah, a bit back and forth. Um, I was going to get it on Friday, but when the, the truck driver arrived, they were still like desperately trying to scrape the logos off it. So what day did you buy it? Wednesday, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, of course, there you need to you need to transfer the money, and I need to wait for that, and then they can release it, and then you have to have a, a shipping company that can actually haul it to wherever you need it ready. Um, and they were ready on Friday, and I thought, nice, we can get it done before I go on holiday. Um, and then the truck driver called me and like, oh, there's this poor guy desperately scraping paint off while I'm watching. So could I deliver it on Monday because I'm going that way anyway? So, of course, yeah, no problem, but I'm not going to be home. So my father-in-law, uh, luckily, um, has de dealt with a lot of shipping containers previously. So uh, he was here and took delivery. So uh, I've been on holiday just getting pictures 
So, <laughs> all right, now it's installed. Now it's hoisted in place, and uh, yeah, so uh, now it's here. Fantastic! Great. So, are you excited or? <laughs> well, I, I was excited before I got home. Now I have a bit of the nerves again. Uh, I, I didn't sleep the first night. I'm not going to lie. I When I buy something, especially on a whim, um, I get <laughs> nerves that you cannot believe. It's like, oh, oh my God, what have I done? Can I cancel it? No, it's legally binding. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Can I just sell it again? I know I don't have, I haven't prepared for anything. <laughs> And of course, the next day, the nerves started to settle down. And then, of course, uh, when my father-in-law sent the pictures that it, it's there and it looks good, okay, I started to think, all right, now I know what I want to do with it. And of course, when I came home today, and you're like, oh my God, there's a huge shipping container and all the neighbors are watching because they're probably thinking that we're going to move or something. <laughs> so yeah, well, no, it, it's okay, but it needs a bit of work. So uh, I'm starting to figure out a plan i've been walking around it with a measuring stick and taking notes what's the first uh, point of order what's the first job on it um the first thing i want to do is to paint it um but of course there as any shipping containers there there, there are holes in it that i need to uh, <laughs> take care of not many but they, they have drilled some holes for fastening things and so on and um, I would like to put two windows in. Um, that's going to be this week's project, I think. And then I haven't decided yet. There is a lot of screw holes. Should I just spend a day welding them from the inside? Or should I just drill them out and put in watertight rivets? Um, because it's it's a shipping container. It's not like in mint condition and I'm going to hack away at it and build and put stuff on it because it's going to be an active workshop. So it, it's not going to be a showpiece. Um, so I'm thinking, should I try and weld them without being a hundred percent comfortable with my TIG welder or should I just put pop rivets in and then that will be a fully good solution. And, um, or just a bolt and nut on it then. In case you want a hole there in the future, <laughs> yeah, that's the same with the uh, with the rivet. I mean, you can just drill it out and ta -da, true, there's true. there is a hole. Um, and of I course, wanna... before the winter, I would like to put some insulation in, and before I do that, I, I I need to know that it is watertight because I don't want one tiny hole just leaking water when there is snow on top of it, and then just really ruining the insulation. What's the condition of the container otherwise? And how old is it? Uh, does it smell of fish? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually, um, it's decent. It doesn't have too many dings, uh, not much rust. Uh, so it's, I mean, the surface, It's it's been out in the sun, so it's, it's a bit faded in the colors, but the, the gray color is a nice, uh, like a, a backing color for um, I, I want to paint it either in darker gray or black and i don't need to do any groundwork basically because there is some uh, specialty cheap kind of paint you can use that all already have like a rust prohibitant in it so i can just uh, get some old clothes for the kids and just give them a paint roll each and just have at it <laughs> <laughs> and have everything painted up to one meter's height. <laughs> that, that's really handy, actually. That's the worst bit to paint when you're an adult, isn't it? Yeah. True. Um, true. <laughs> the only thing is, we we are having some creative uh, differences when it comes to the color choice. Um, someone wants it to be pink. <laughs> is, that, is that you? <laughs> of course. I mean, Barbie pink. I mean, it's gonna be. <laughs> no, no, pink is my color. You pick another. <laughs> You get the kids to paint the bottom, you can do the middle, get KJ around to do the top for you. It's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, it's going to be a paint session in October, so uh, <laughs> bring your overalls or coveralls. Are you going to insulate the inside? That's the plan. Um, they are, well, it's a, it's a metal box, so it's you're going to have isn't? issues with condensation or something yeah. like that, mm -hmm. so... Unless I want to put a permanent heater in and a dehumidifier, just running twenty four seven, 
to keep the moisture level down, I should put some insulation in. Yeah, then you need a vapor barrier and so on. So that's going to be the biggest job, I think. But that's an inside job. <laughs> so that's going to be fine. <laughs> nice. nice. So how, how, how many parts of videos will this be? <laughs> I haven't really... It's... I'm not sure if it's gonna be a video. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a container guy. I don't think, or maybe I am, because I'm getting a lot of ideas for what I can do with it. I, I want a, a hatch on the rooftop, and I want the inside ladder, which I also can hang tools on when it's not in use. And I want to build in place a uh, wood burning stove. I can build that myself out of square tubing. That's a video. So, it, <laughs> yeah, it might be a, a winter with a container derivative videos <laughs> it'd make a fan if, if it all fails it'd make a fantastic hell quarter three wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn it that would be cool yeah how many recorders could you fit in that a lot but you also have these uh, huge bass recorders they are at least yeah. a couple of meters high so i yeah. mean you get 25 of those but that's I don't have the budget for that. <laughs> that. That's a good look. Just take the a photo of the hell quarter and project that to the side and and paint it like that. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be cool. <laughs> oh, we're, we, should, we shouldn't give you bad ideas already. Uh, <laughs> so that's the plan. I'm going to put the, the the windows in and I'm going to paint it and then I'm going to see if if my nerves have settled and I think this is this is doable then it's okay. If not, I think I can actually sell it for the same or maybe even a bit more after I painted it than I actually paid for it. So that's the excuse I'm using to keep my nerves in check. <laughs> You'll not be selling it. It's going to work out fantastic. I mean, the big question is, have you got room for another one? <laughs> that's That's the thing, though, because this is going to be... I'm going to have my welder there. I'm going to have a lathe there and the metalwork and all the tools and the wrenches and everything that I don't do for the woodworking bit. But I'm still going to keep my woodworking equipment in the old garage. But I have been thinking that that corner nook where I do the electronics work and so on, that might be in the inner part of the container and I might put a wall in with a door to keep the dust out and so on. That's one idea, uh, because then at some point I will have the the workshop container where I do the metal work, welding and so on, and the electrical work or whatever. And then if we at one point move or I get another one, that will be the woodworking part. And then I will actually cover the three things that I need to have a fully operational workshop without mixing the three things and getting dust over all the electronics or setting fire to my wood shop by welding. So <laughs> well, there might be a plan to the madness, but um, tomorrow I'm going to open doors and take a picture because it's actually on the one wall. It's mounted full metal shelves all the way. Um, oh, cool. And I'm just going to put them out for sale because I need to remove them anyway. I'm not going to use them. So hopefully someone are willing to pay a few quid for them and also come and pick them up. Because if not, I have to drive them to the dump. Just put them on the uh, side wall, put a little porch over them, and then you've got wood storage and stuff like that. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But uh, Better than throwing them away. But yeah, get some money lot. back is bad either. No, and it's not a money, but I, I don't have place to have a lot of things. So uh, we're trying to tidy up around the house. And yeah, I have made a decent place to put our firewood and so on. So I try to keep it a bit tidy. I'm having guests over in October, so it should be presentable. I need to attend the yard <laughs> as well. If not, I get the thumbs down by the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't look at my garden. <laughs> But uh, that being said, uh, we are having a container bear in October while we work around yeah. and uh, kick the tires <laughs> and talk about what we could do. I mean, a oh. great thing with you having it already is that you know how hot it will be in it in, during the summertime. Oh, well, that's, that's a data also... point you, you got for free. 
that's why you also need the insulation because it helps in the summertime because it's been out yeah. in the sun today and I opened it up to let the kids in because they were <laughs> as happy as can be. And then like, it's a sauna and <laughs> yes. that is expected. But of course, one thing is the insulation, but I'm also going to, why I like this one is that on each side it has vertical, two vertical flat panels close to each end. So on the one side, I'm going to put in two horizontal uh, slit the windows to, to let light in. On the other side, uh, I'll have ventilation. You need one vent at the, the floor and one at the other end, top yeah. high to get circulation. Uh, I also got to put a fan in. And then, of course, at one of the panels, I'm going to mount the, the ladder to get onto the roof. And uh, yeah, I've started to try to figure out how it's going to be, but I need to get those shelves out so I can have a beer and just sit on a chair in there and uh, really feel the place out because I want benches on only one side because it's only two and a half meter wide. So once you start to place things on both sides, you don't have any floor space and I want to move things around. So uh, I need to be smart. Um, my workshop now, I love it, but it started with me. I have a lot of shit on the floors. So I need to build a bench here and I'd always stack things <laughs> on top of that. And then suddenly I got the delivery of a CNC. All right, I need to make something for that. And I, um, my feet are freezing, so I need to raise parts. So it, it's been a bit build as you go. And I thought I'll think a bit more <laughs> on this one before <laughs> I start to completely kit it out. Yeah, my, uh, my workshop started out with just one one bench down one side and that's how I wanted to keep it because I like the feeling of space Yeah. and then I got the laser and thought well I've got to build another bench on the other side now so <laughs> now I've got two benches and the laser's in here with me in the office now it's not even in the it's not even in the workshop <laughs> yeah but it has well, in, it has enabled me to leave some tools out the bandsaw the pillar drill and the bench sander and things like that are permanently out now, which is a lot easier than lifting them up and putting them on the bench to use them. So, yeah, yeah, it depends how you want your setup, really, isn't it? And that's also the thing. I <laughs> I bought some steel tubing before I, I knew I was going to buy the container, so I have the materials to build a weld table, and that's the first thing I'm going to build in the container because I'm just going to get the shelves out and I'm going to get my welder in there. Uh, it has a flat floor. So I'm just going to weld the, um, the tabletop because I'm going to be doing a lot of welding now. So it's, <laughs> I need that table <laughs> and the practice <laughs> and the practice. And I also think that, um, I'm going to have the welder and everything in the outer part towards the doors so and also i need wheels on that welding table because if i'm gonna weld on bigger things or if it is a nice day outside i really like the the possibility of just opening the doors and just wheel everything out and work out in the sun that's one of the things i really like about my workshop today i can just open an entire wall and just bring everything out so you get a chance to use the plasma cutter at last You're going to use the, you're going to use the plasma cutter cutting the windows out, I presume. God damn it. I didn't think about that. Because I was thinking, <laughs> you forgot we right. had it. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> I was thinking, I'm going to weld the frame, and I'm going to put that up, and I'm just going to bolt it in place, and I'm just going to use that to, as a template for the, the multi-cutter and just cut down or an angle grinder. But of course, I can just easily use the plasma cutter. Yeah. And that's also the plan of the the square pieces I then end up with cutting out. That is very nice practice pieces for setting up the welder. So when I'm going to weld in the holes or I'm going to weld some brackets, I can just figure out the settings and get a nice yeah. weld on those uh, scrap pieces before I start <laughs> welding on the outer shell. Fantastic. But you know, the plasma cutter didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're always buying tools, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Now I have room for that lathe. I um, just uh, don't have the money for it anymore. So. <laughs> 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 
all in good time. Yeah. I mean, uh, there might be a lathe for me as a, a Christmas present for myself. I mean, uh, depending on how far I get with the uh, the container. I mean, and if you've been a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then we have to wait for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let Howard take his mind off it for a while. Glenn, what have you been up to? Um... <laughs> yeah, no, I have. Uh, I've been carrying on with my uh, shaping little shaping project that's nearly finished now. You're sculpting. My yeah, I don't like to call it sculpting. It, <laughs> that's something an artist does. I'm not an artist, I don't think. <laughs> but the question is, when when do we get to know what it's going to be? Because I haven't figured that out yet by the pictures I've seen. No, uh, I, that's because I'm not doing. I'm doing sneaky pictures because it doesn't look quite right. <laughs> yeah, they're also very, very sneaky, and they, you, yeah. yeah, my imagination th- has run away with me at least. So, <laughs> I was thinking it's sneaky because it, it could be abstract art, but then you would just show everything and just call it out as that. But uh... <laughs> I keep telling Tim messaged and uh, said, "What is it?" and he came up with some funny suggestions, and I just keep telling him it's a shark. Because he did a shark. <laughs> it's not a shark. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not as exciting as that. No, you're just going to have to wait for that one, I'm afraid. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I've um, actually started editing the video, even though it's not quite finished today. I made a start on that and um, outlined a script using AI. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, there's a How has that worked thing. out? Is it a competent it, assistant or? Do you know what? It's just given me a nice basic framework, I think, to work around if I go down that route, that is. But and I think I will. Yeah, so, it, yeah, it wasn't it's... a total cata- catastrophe, at least. No, no, no. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, depending on <laughs> no. what, what AI you use, I feel you get vastly different uh, answers and, and quality. It's funny, the, the prompt I gave it, um, and the result that came back was me sculpting out of a piece of wood a card, like as in a playing card. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how it came up with that. Interesting, but yeah. that sounds like a CNC <laughs> job, perhaps out of plywood. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Otherwise, I, I, I can. Hard, it's hard to see, but yeah, perhaps laser. <laughs> Three-dimensional playing card would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Be a bastard to shuffle, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but other than that bit of making, um, not much really. I went out with friends on Saturday night, and we were up till three o'clock in the morning chatting. So, I lost part of Saturday and some of Sunday as well, <laughs> just through not having the energy. <laughs> that can happen. Yeah, I was I was really impressed. I've been doing the totally different route. I've been well yesterday I think I was in bed after ten, but the last few days before that I've I've put one of the kids to bed at around seven and then just fallen asleep. Of course, woken up again like between nine and ten and just ah, i'm just gonna continue sleeping because i haven't been like a hundred percent i've been a bit sniffly and uh probably has a bug of some kind uh, but i've been sleeping like 10 hours plus every night and it's it's like a drug it's yeah. almost addictive it's yeah. like um, <laughs> i feel like superman i have so much energy and power it's too, maybe too much and then <laughs> like i'm going flash gordon from like six in the morning and then of course at some point you crash during the day just because of the bus but i mean that's <laughs> with any drug you're gonna you're gonna peak at some point and have a little downer <laughs> i feel like when you started going to bed at a reasonable hour i started to go go to bed later like one o'clock at, <laughs> instead and and then being dragged out of bed at six uh, <laughs> By the kids, even so, uh, so I think we've shifted some something between us. I think that's part of the uh, holiday cycle, isn't it? When you're not at work, I find myself going to bed later and later, and getting up later and later. Yeah. Not, not, 
you, you, you can't do that with the kids, obviously. They get you out. No, and yeah. I don't. I, I feel if I get out of bed at like nine, I feel I wasted half of oh, the day. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I did get grumpy really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> so have you managed to get any making done, KJ? No. And uh, I mean, that's. I can partly blame that. Uh, the youngest had an ear inflammation that we had had, had to treat, and that would be draining uh, some energy. And then I blocked myself rather severely in the workshop. I, I tied it up so I, all my work surfaces were were clean. So then I decided <laughs> on a whim one evening to empty out the the food cellar we have, which is just a bunch of crap in there, more or less. You know, all the life. pots and pans and odd mugs and glasses and I mean some <laughs> stuff are what it's supposed to be there like uh, beer storage and jams and that sort of thing but a lot of stuff that really doesn't need to be there so I empty that out and put that on all the work surfaces in the <laughs> workshop and so and I cleaned out and and repainted stuff and that sort of thing in there so I blocked myself from the from the workshop entirely um, oh dear. <laughs> But uh, I have been spending most of my energy out in the garden uh, anyway. So I uh, made those, uh, the stairs, it's just two steps. So it's not that much, but I uh, haven't been doing that before. Uh, brick laying, if that's what it's called, with concrete oh, blocks. Okay. Yeah. Did um, you video any of it? No. No? I, I nice. took, took some pictures just because, I mean, this is not for... No one needs to repeat what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> I do not feel confident in any way, shape, or form. Um, you can do a how not to video. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. We'll see about that. Uh, and then I've been digging some in the garden because uh, summer vacation is digging in the garden for me for some reason. <laughs> Just trying you... to make the the closest to the house it's supposed to be you're su not supposed to have stuff growing up to the house uh, it's yeah. good to have some gravel or stones uh, and we have been not keeping that in check so the moss and grass has slowly grown over the the few stones <laughs> that were there 10 years ago and are now trying to climb the house instead so i had to dig that out <laughs> So is that finished now? or uh, The digging is finished. So now I have to figure out how to reapply some kind of uh, moisture barrier to keep water going right. in the right direction. Because for some reason they decided to end the... the it's a, some kind of plastic tarp glued on by uh, some asphalt glue, what's it called? Bitumen. Bitumen, yeah. 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 Uh, and they ended that like... 10 centimeters from the wall instead of going oh. up to the wall and up a bit which oh, I thought was what you should be doing <laughs> um, so yeah I'm gonna see if I can use we have some leftover uh, what's it called the asphalt tarp you put on the roof um, yep roofing felt ah roofing felt yes that's yeah. uh, we have uh, those with um, with the with the bitumen already on it so you just have to lay it down and heat it and then it should oh, okay. adhere uh, at least that's what they did on the roof when they changed that <laughs> right. a couple of years ago uh, so hopefully I can use that otherwise I have to figure something out but yeah it's, you have something my, to do when the weather is nice <laughs> my old uh, garage had the uh, roofing felt on and I always find at some point it fails quite catastrophically <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, everything has a best before date. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. What it is, how long, I mean, uh, the extension under the ground, the, the top of the bunker, how far out does it go? Um, it's about two meters or something like that. Yeah, because I would feel... Like I would want to remove all the soils and then put down some plastic and then put the soil back again because I feel, like you said, Glenn, that yeah. it will break at some point and then if you try to to fix it, water will always find a way. And uh, yeah, but then again, I, I've seen 
I remember when they built our old house, they put this uh, gnarly plastic up against the wall and then they put some insulation there and then they put the ground in. And now I see that they do it the other way around because they put the insulation to the wall and then they put that gnarly black plastic thing and then they put the earth. But I thought the reason for the gnarly part on that plastic is to have a layer of air. So if you get moisture there, it can evaporate out. But if you put the, the insulation which is in some very dense styrofoam up against a flat wall, you will get a capillary effect. So any moisture will just sit in between those two surfaces and really don't have anywhere to go. And then the plastic outside is just, I've heard them say now it's, yeah, it's to protect the insulation from the ground so it doesn't break, but I don't understand it. I mean, it's, it's reputable entrepreneur is doing it but I, I i see moisture getting trapped there and maybe it's because i come from the shipping industry and uh, the fear of water uh, and doing everything you can to keep it on the outside of the hull of whatever you're building <laughs> i mean it might have seeped into the back of my head so i'm i'm seeing well there, there is room for moisture there that can go anywhere and yeah with that bunker solution i would probably have a full sheet of plastic from probably up almost until your windows and going down and then <laughs> up and then over the edge of that uh, uh, bunker. And then I would put the soil back by hand very gingerly with white <laughs> mitten gloves or something to not ruin everything. So <laughs> I, I wouldn't put the soil back. I'd build a deck or something over it. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we have some long-term plans to remove the, all the grass and put some other, uh, some kind of low-maintenance uh, um, greenery there. We said some just ground covering, low-growing stuff there. Yeah. But that's way in the future. So I think this is going to be a, a partway solution. And then we'll see in a couple of years when we do the rest of it. Because, I mean... The bunker, as we call it, isn't really a, it's not a functioning part of the house in any way. It's uh, just on the outside and it's, it gets, it gets quite damp. Uh, when we moved in, the, the, the people who lived there before us, you had this at wood storage, which is a great plan. Yeah. I mean, the, the, tre <laughs> the treated wood, that looked kind of okay, but the rest of it was, yeah, nothing you really could use. So now <laughs> we just keep, uh, like the snow shovels and uh, uh, some old cinder blocks and that sort of thing. Uh, storage of stuff we don't need. So, yeah, but we really should redo all of it. The reason I'm doing, it, I'm doing it now is because it's an extension of the pathway to the house, which I'm, I mean, it, partly this is, might be procrastinating, actually getting down <laughs> to it and laying down those concrete flags. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I've convinced myself that no, I have to do this beforehand so everything ties together and I see where everything starts and stops <laughs> and I have somewhere to put the gravel and yada yada hey. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's always good to put off a job as long as you possibly can. Give you more thinking time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, uh, I envy both your gardens, both in size and flatness. Um, and I think we discussed it on last episode as well. And uh, of course, I had now been in contact with the guy who <laughs> rents out these miniature excavators. And I am kind of like, do I want to spend a lot of time trying to make that part flat and then spend a couple of years before getting the grass in place and so on, and then maybe build something? Or should I just rent one of those petrol powered drills and just make? a lot of pillars this summer and then uh, start building the the beams for the deck and then maybe continue next year because if I want it completely flat uh, and as large as possible, I need a retention wall towards the neighbor. And if you're going to have a proper retention wall, you have to make the foundation for it and wait the season for it to set before you start uh, either stacking stones or pouring concrete, but all those things are expensive. And I thought, 
I can just build pillars like up to the neighbors and I can just plank off that part up uh, to the deck and I can get a, a fairly large deck there and then I can put a like a whatever on top there shed or a greenhouse or whatever container or a container <laughs> that's that's also going there yeah because if, if you build a retention wall it has to be on your property and be ex- you can inspect it from your property i mean that, i think that's in sweden at least so it, you have to build it like a meter in from the yes uh, a meter the, in so you, so you unless... lose a lot of space by that. Uh, unless the neighbor uh, agrees uh, and you yeah. get a written consent and, and they have a part retention wall and I have discussed it with them that they would like to extend that further down and I know he's well connected he drives a, a truck and uh, he can probably get the stones and uh, someone to put them in place relatively cheap so if they would like to extend that wall, we can maybe help with half the price because that retention wall will make our lot a lot more usable. Um, How are they making the retention walls in Norway? Are they do they use the Gabion system, the cage filled with stones, or those are getting more and more popular. I've been looking into really those nice, as well those. because those yeah. I can pull off myself. Um, yeah. If you have nice looking stones, those are great. You only need yeah. ice looking stones on the outside, though, KJ. True, but it's still a lot of stones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you can get in this country. You can get things like crushed concrete, you know, recycled concrete, very cheaply. Yeah, yeah. So, but you still you know, have like... to stack them by layers because yeah. you can't. Yeah, I've been looking into those as well for that one wall that we dug until we were going to build a garage or something, but. Yeah, gabions are getting more popular, um, but a lot of people are using granite blocks, uh, but yeah. they are expensive. But of course, you just uh, you make some gravel down, and uh, so you have proper drainage, and you can just stack them because they they are not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and then you have the older ones, which is the the casted concrete blocks in various shapes and forms, but those are not as popular so you can buy those relatively cheap uh, people are even giving them away if you can go and pick them down for them but i don't like the aesthetics of those and you need to do proper groundwork because if you have some movement in the ground you will have cracks uh, so of course i would like to just stack some natural granite rocks uh, not the cut ones just uh, the regular pieces with all the gaps and so on so it looks a bit natural but even those are one expensive and they are extremely heavy <laughs> i got some smaller ones from some friends of ours and we spent an entire summer me and my brother-in-law just using the hand trolley and moving them one by one and then stacking them and then no this doesn't fit let's try this one and they weigh 40 <laughs> kilos so you're like i don't i don't have the back or the the mental capacity to do that <laughs> again so <laughs> i'm looking for something easy and yeah gabions would work uh, because you could just put them up and just get trailer loads of rocks and put in there but uh, yeah then again drilling some pillars and making a deck that's you get to use a screwdriver and wood screws i mean that's as fun as it gets <laughs> you can drink beer and have friends over and bring your drill i keep you with beer and then uh... <laughs> it's probably cheaper to pay somebody in cash in norway isn't it <laughs> than in beer Depends, yeah. <laughs> With or without <laughs> tax. <laughs> if you just kind of pay that, spend that money on beer, then you can cut out the middleman. <laughs> Speaking of drills, have you seen the latest thing on Instagram with drill wrestling? <laughs> yeah, that's no? so awesome. <laughs> it's got a couple of million of views of that. I, I just saw, I've seen a couple of them. It just takes two. Uh, battery drills and connects them with a rod and kicks them off and then they fight until one of them breaks. <laughs> <laughs> who's the ch- who's the champion so far? Which brand? I haven't seen the finale. I th- oh. Milwaukee <laughs> beat the vault at least. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I saw Ryobi won 
because the the other one slipped the the piece. I mean, the the chuck oh. slipped or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but I, I mean, it's obviously really not fun. seen Bosch or Makita do this yet because she would have remembered that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. waiting for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a couple of them. I think the the channel is Tune Goon, T U N E G G O O N. So yeah, it's it looks really funny when you're throwing them on the lawn and, and filming it and getting millions of views on it <laughs> because it's so it's so bloody stupid, but it's wonderful <laughs> at the same time. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> If you could do that with a lathe, get two headstocks on the lathe and let them battle it out. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds extremely dangerous. <laughs> In which case, it's probably fun. <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the most fun I've seen anyone have with a lathe is on the uh, behind the press channel, the second channel of uh, the hydraulic press channel, when they uh, friction welded two hammer faces together using a lathe. Oh, Jesus. That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that looked sketchy as... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that would... Yeah, just, just another reason for getting a lathe. I mean, you can friction weld uh, a hex bolt onto anything. I mean, you just yeah. rotate it and then start squeezing it. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was looking at uh, lathes again tonight on the Facebook Marketplace, and there was the same lathe that um, I wanted to buy and missed out on, but um, this guy had obviously lost or broken some parts to it and made his own. And um, it, it looked pretty much like the same sort of effort I put into my wooden blade. So the, the, the tail stock was a sharpened bolt put through a bearing and then just welded on. Yeah. That's the kind of precision you want. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, I didn't I didn't make him an offer on that one. <laughs> but you're still hunting. I'm looking. It's not a it's not a serious. Thing. If I if I see the right one at the right price, then I'll get it. But I'm not in a rush. Like all we're in a container. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll have one by next week. <laughs> <laughs> I um I want to get this um, sculpting done because I've got another project in mind that I'm quite excited about. I can't wait to start that one. Oh, you want a tease? It's a bit more than this small tease. <laughs> It involves a fire extinguisher and it's going to be another musical instrument build. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome tease. <laughs> you had me at fire extinguisher. Um. <laughs> oh, now my brain is racing away on what you could do with those prompts. I have a project coming up as well. I got almost all the parts. Um, for my uh, summer project, which is a um, air pressured powered uh, super soaker uh, yeah. water gun. And uh, I'm not sure yet if I'm, if I'm going to use the canister that I got, which you can pour water into and then pressurize it, if we, or if I should just use that as um, the air pressurizer. And then I've, if I should get, I used the. Uh, like a fire extinguisher to put the water in. But uh, I got all the parts. I just need to uh, see and see the, the handle and the stock in the plywood, and it should be relatively easy to make. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you just can get the fittings to do the right pressure yeah. standard. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, I mean, it's it's not as much as... You don't need to go overboard with the pressure uh, as long as you get a good water flows. I mean, if you do four True. bar or six bar, I mean, it, it's going to squirt real good. So I'm not going to overpressure anything. I know all the, the pressure vessels are actually rated higher than my compressor can do. So 
That's a good thing. Oh, that's cool. Of course, once <laughs> once I've built them, I've filled everything totally up with water and pressure tested to the, the six bar that my compressor can do. And if they can work with that, and I just fill them up later for up to four bars just to have a safety barrier. But uh, that should be plenty. <laughs> <laughs> so I just it's need funny. to go to the hardware store and get one of these really cheap ass blower guns because that's going to be the the trigger mechanism because i'm not going to try to machine or build anything well i don't got a lathe or the machining capabilities to do that and they cost like five bucks so <laughs> it's funny i've had this uh, fire extinguisher for some time now i accidentally set it off in the van that's why it's useless ah. <laughs> but only a little bit of powder came out of it fortunately um but about like I say, I've had it for a while, and I've been trying to rack my brains on what to do with it. And I thought, you know, I could make a, just a nice little car ornament. But then you came up and said, with your water cylinder, that copper cylinder you had, well, I might make a, a car out of that. So I thought, well, I'm not going to do that then. And I was thinking, oh, I could make a water pistol or some sort of water shooter. <laughs> you come up and say, you're going to do this. So <laughs> it's a, a musical instrument it's going to be. <laughs> ah, very nice. <laughs> But that being said, though, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but there is, there is a lot of people selling old, outdated fire extinguisher. And I was at a safety course uh, where we also did some fire drills and the, the company, they um, also provides and restocks a lot of these uh, used fire extinguisher. And I just went up to this guy and like, that powder because in norway it's the powdered um, fire extinguishers that are sold the most mm -hmm. um, of course in my house i want the the foam ones because the powder will ruin just as much as the fire <laughs> um, but i asked them what's in this powder let's say if i get an old one and i just empty it out i mean is it is it a hazard and no no it's it's totally biodegradable and you don't hurt anything, so uh, you just uh, have a bucket of water and just empty it into that, and you can just throw it out on the ground. Doesn't bother oh, anyone. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm sitting now looking for some fire extinguishers because I've seen Laura Kampf did the uh, the party grill and so on, and now having a plasma cutter, um, I'm gonna. I'm going to switch some roller blades wheels so that I can put a, a canister down and I can just rotate it around its own axis because I, I just, oh, yeah. then I can hold the, um, the plasma cutter at a steady angle and I can just rotate it to get these really nice cuts around the circumference. So I'm going to, I'm going to have a lot of fire extinguishers in the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Fire extinguishers are good at that because, I mean, pipe, steel pipe at that diameter is quite expensive. Um, so it's it can be nice to have a couple of different kinds for different diameters. Yeah. To play around with. Just have to resist the temptation to get the three working ones out of the house and use those for a project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you should always replace them uh, after some period of time. Well, we'll do after some period of time. <laughs> <laughs> we're accidentally set them off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just have a fire drill at home. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> you, you, you start a fire in the driveway. Say, okay, now yeah. run and get the yeah. fire extinguisher. Where is it? Come on, show <laughs> that you can use it. <laughs> yeah, I've got two of the really big foam ones in the house, actually. That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny if you, you wake up early one morning and you go start a fire just just beside the car and then you just bang pots together and wake up <laughs> the rest of the family I'm not here, I'm at work you put out the fire <laughs> show me you can do it <laughs> wake up the whole street as well <laughs> I just realized that uh, I need a lot of fire extinguishers and the the working ones because that, that container I now have is going to be a fire hazard. <laughs> so yes, uh, yeah, I'm going to have some fire extinguishers and um, maybe I also should have a water mist system. That would be cool to make. Just uh, 
use your compressor to uh, just uh, if you open a valve it just dumps a lot of water on everything that uh just you don't have much. it pressurized all the time if if it you bang it and <laughs> oh, dad what off. does this do no 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 <laughs> <laughs> instant <goes> shower <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's a good idea not to have flammable things just leaning up against it and having a, what's it called? A fire, uh, not a fire pit, uh, like a fire moat uh, <laughs> around it so that fire can't spread. Yeah. yeah. It's going to look like the uh, workings of a the engine room on a submarine you'll contain a soon. Because last week you were, comp- you were going to run compressed air through it ventilation system for your mask to plug in at various points argon gas i think you were going to plumb into it and now we've got an irrigation system as well (laughs) i mean a nautical theme would be look look really nice it is battleship gray at the moment isn't it so it is um (laughs) (laughs) having a periscope as well in the middle just coming down from the ceiling if you want oh you've got to have a periscope (laughs) That'd be fantastic. You know, that would be fucking awesome. That would yeah. be, yeah. Oh. And because that, that's one of the things that I've been looking if you can buy these off the shelf instead of making them. I want the top hatch and then I want the ladder on the inside. So on nice sunny days, I can go up and I can have a railing. So I, it's, it's a top deck so I can sit there and drink beer because the view is going to be good. Um, but yeah, periscope, that would be awesome. And you need a periscope telescope. Yeah. So, so you can watch the stars from inside it. And, cool. uh, and the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how your mind works, I <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <Keep my laughs> <tongue. Your> doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's the good thing though. This this is a used container and it? it has some holes in it and it's it's in the cheaper range of used containers, so and I'm not afraid of trying things out. For I mean, if if, if I mean, I, I probably wasted more money on tobacco over a couple of years uh, previously when I was doing the um, the snooze. And of course, you can't really go wrong. And I have a welder, so if I drill a hole in the wrong place, I can fix it again. So it would be cool to have. I mean, I want the workshop to have a bit of Adam Savage feel. It's going to, it's going to be a lot in there because it's a small place, but it needs to be a bit structured. Um, but yeah, some cool features like a periscope and a small wood-burning oven and then some copper pipes just coming here and just for the aesthetics, just uh, that's for hanging my towel on <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. I mean... A radar screen. Yeah. Yeah. Bing. And a machine that goes <laughs> ping just yeah. for the hell of it. <laughs> ding. <laughs> ding. <laughs> and a, re- a big red button, and when you press it, it is the theme song of. Oh, what's that? It was a parody movie of Jacques Cousteau. Bill Murray was in it. Like the. the yeah. Oh. It was a crazy movie, and they did the, like a low key acoustic covers of David Bowie. I mean, it was an amazing movie. I just don't remember how it was called, but that doesn't ring any bells for me. The no. Adventure of Sisu. So. Yeah, something else. Uh, Sisu. That was yeah, the other. Now I have to Google it. <laughs> Come it's on, a Wes Google. Anderson movie. Yeah, yeah. It's a brilliant movie. Oh, I want to see that again. <laughs> a half pint of wine's lasting well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I refill it. <laughs> Life Aquatic. That's the name of it. Yeah, Life Aquatic. Life Aquatic that's... with Steve Cecil. That's, that's an amazing movie. It. That is. I haven't watched it since since it came out, and it's t- uh, twenty years ago. Because time flies, and it's not a new movie at all, of which I thought it was. Never uh, no. heard of it. Now that's one thing I want to see. Um, I saw a documentary, the um, the old expedition boat of um, Jacques Cousteau is undergoing restoration. Um, 
I might go there and see the restoration, but if they get to complete it before I go, that will be fine. But I mean, that was an amazing vessel. I mean, they had a helicopter deck on a, on a way too small a vessel. And since there was a French crew, they actually had a stainless steel tank built into it, complete and only used for wine. So they had <laughs> thousands of liters of wine in a bulk tank because they're French. Uh, and at the bow of the vessel, they actually built an extension that you from the top you could go down to below the water surface and then they had like a bulb uh, with some windows so you can actually watch um, in front of the vessel underwater and I mean it feels like I'm what I'm going to do with the container is like they're, they're just throwing things on because oh, I need that that would be cool I just weld it on there I mean it, it, it looks good it works fine and just do it and uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I have to, uh, I have to have a, a plan the next couple of weeks so I don't go totally overboard just from the get go. You need the basics, but then you can start uh, adding fun things. No, fuck it, just go straight overboard. Yeah. Do it. All right. I'll start in the floor. Yeah. I'll, I'll start with a tank of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll see you there. I mean, a, a beer cellar isn't a strange thing. Strange things I have in a workshop workshop like that. I think. No, oh, most uh, people just have a fridge with beer, but I mean you can't have that in that hot box you have at the moment. So I'll have a. I need to have a a conference call with uh, Mr. Malt <laughs> to see if he has any <laughs> thoughts about how we should go about. It. I'm sure he has. <laughs> Could probably use the uh, the fire extinguisher for some sort of pressurized tank for getting uh, making your beer fizzy, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we already talked really about this. Clean it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fine. It tastes yeah. foamy. This beer is re- really has a crown on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you already have a compressor and a relatively large air tank, and you're planning on running the the connection point for the compressor around the container, should you also have like a, a major purge valve? So instead of going with the magic machine or the the blowing yes. gun, just you, you just open the doors and you just have a long lanyard to a big valve and just you just yank it and everything that's not bolted down <laughs> just <laughs> get blown out, but yes. squeaky clean in a second. Oh, you know those sanding tables you get that have the... That they suck things down onto. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, with I, the I, holes in that, an opposite version of that, just on one end. Yeah. <laughs> you should have nozzles uh, going off, like doof, 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 like in series when you're blowing up stuff. So it just forces <laughs> everything out. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then you you turn around because it's a cramped space, and you yank that valve when it's uh-huh. closed, and then you do like the the pressure forming that uh, Colin first did. You like boom, and you have a. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Total spherical uh, container. <laughs> and off it rolls down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly it's the neighbor's problem. <laughs> oh, that's, an, that's a wonderful image to end this episode on, I think. <laughs> Maybe I should put a logo on it. Ocean Gate or something like that. <laughs> too soon? Too soon? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're going to have lots of fun with that, I think. <laughs> so thanks, everyone, for watching. And have a nice whatever you're having. And see you in a half pint. Bye. In a half Bye. Pint. Bye. Bye. Who's watching? Who's watching, KJ? Oh, that's a separate stream. The one I'm, oh, is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> getting some cash for. <laughs>